episode 70, we looked at nested forms from scratch. And today we're going to be looking at using a cocoon gem. So the idea is we have our to-do list and a to-do list has many tasks. And from our to-do list form, we can simply add in new tasks on that same form, and then update it to have those tasks saved. And today we're going to look at doing the same thing, but with the gem Cocoon. And Cocoon is really cool because it makes nested forms much easier to work with. And I like some of the features of Cocoon that makes it easier to do your nested forms and make them a lot more flexible. And we'll look at some of those things in this episode. So from our previous episode, we had the following set up with a to-do list where it has many tasks, dependent, destroy, and this just means that if we destroy our to-do list, it'll destroy all the associated tasks. And then we have accepts nested attributes for tasks, and we allow this to be destroyed, and we'll reject the record if the description is blank. And then a task belongs to a to-do list, and because the belongs to is required within Rails 5, we set the optional to true so we don't get any errors when creating a new record. And then in our to-do list controller, we have our strong parameters where we have our name and then we pass in the task attributes. And then we pass in all the attributes of a task. And then into that array, we add the underscore destroy. So whenever we click to remove a task, that task will be queued up to be deleted. So to get started, we'll add the gem cocoon to our gem file. Be sure to run button and restart your Rails application. And then in your application JS file, you'll need to require and then put in cocoon. And then in our to-do list form in the T body, we want to give this some class and we'll just call this tasks. And then down in the form actions, we want to create a new link to add in a new task. And the cocoon gem gives us a link to add association helper. And here we can pass in the name of the button, we can pass in our form object, and then we can pass in the plural version of the method that we want to add. And then we can pass in some stuff like a class. So we want to call this a button primary just so it looks nice. And then we need to pass in some data attributes. And we need to pass in the data attributes because we need to reference that we want to append to this tbody tag, the tasks, and we want to add it at the end. So we can call our data and then pass in a hash. And our first one is going to be data association insert node. And we want to call this dot tasks. Notice that I am referencing the dot, meaning that it's a class. Whereas if this were an ID, then you would just simply use pound. And the next data attribute we want to add is the association insert method. And here we want to pass in append. And this basically says that we just want to add in the new form fields for the new task at the end of this body element. And then we can close up the hash. And be sure to take note that whenever we render out one of the tasks, we render the partial of the model followed by underscore fields. And this is just a standard that Cocoon uses. So if we look at the task fields partial, the other helper provided by Cocoon is the link to remove association. And this simply just takes a text and then a form object. And again, you can call something like class and then call your button classes. Going back to our form and reloading, you'll see the updated buttons. And if we add a task, if we just give it some name and maybe we cross off one of the items and we save, it saves our to-do list with the nested attributes. And be sure to check out the documentation because there's some things that we haven't covered, like the callbacks. And this could be very useful for a after insert if you need to run some kind of jQuery or JavaScript on the newly added objects. So for example, if you have a date picker that's added in by Cocoon, then you may notice that it doesn't actually display the date picker. But on the after insert, you can initialize your date pickers. And even with the helpers provided by Cocoon, there's a lot of other options that you have to set. So here's the data association insert method and the data association insert node that we use to place the partials correctly. So it's good to review these and see how you can use them to tweak and get the expected functionality that you're looking for. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.